Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the Super Squad channel where today we once again have another vintage NASCAR diecast haul. These are all for the most part pretty much from the early 2000s and the 90s. There's a couple, I think, let's see. We got one from 1956, but I think it's mostly just the uh, 90s and 2000s. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at all of these. All right, so really quick, I got them all out already, but before we begin, there are a set of two that are exactly the same, so I'm just gonna ignore these, that way we only just do one pair. Let's go ahead and take a look at all of these wonderful looking die cast. We have, there was 26, but minus the two I'm leaving out, we have 24 new die casts to take a look at. Got a whole bunch of really awesome looking paint schemes here. Now, which one should we take a look at first? Hey guys, so I'm just going to quickly interrupt my past self here to make a huge, huge announcement. So, thanks to all of your guys' support, we have our first ever channel partnership. I am happy to announce that the Super Squad channel is now a partner of Flow Sports. Yes, you heard that right. And if you don't know what it is, Flow Sports is a subscription video streaming service dedicated to sports, offering live and on-demand access to hundreds of thousands of competition events in over 25 different sport categories in the US and abroad, with a growing library of more than 300,000 hours of premium content, including news, expert commentary, films, documentaries, and more, Flow Sports has established itself as an innovator and leader in sports streaming. Their vision is to finally give underserved sports the love that they deserve. One thing they have is racing. They have a whole section of racing. It's called Flow Racing. They have a bunch, a bunch of different racing series, including ARCA, ARCA East and West. I have an ARCA car right here. They have the NASCAR Pinty Series, which is very underrated. I'm going to make a follow-up on my underrated slash obscure NASCAR finishes video and that's gonna have basically most of it's gonna be the Pinty series plus maybe like a truck race so yeah maybe an ARCA race in there too so you guys definitely want to watch ARCA East West and the Pinty series they also have the NASCAR modified series late models I have one right here uh, from my previous diecast haul video they have the dirt late models which are really cool you see those in the srx game and the nascar heat three four and five they have the sprint cars midget cars big and small block modifieds and a whole bunch of other racing series that i don't even know the names of so i'm definitely excited to check some of those out it is available on android ios apple tv roku and fire tv subscriptions start at only 12 dollars and 50 cents a month for all that content that is so worth it like that's an amazing deal for all that content so what do you guys have to do if you want to help out and support the channel in the description of this video and in all future videos you can sign up to flow sports using my special link i'll also probably put it in a pinned comment as well in the video so check that out sign up using my special link if you guys want to help out the channel it'll really help me a ton because with all these diecast haul videos and all the nascar stuff coming out soon next gen's oh my gosh i'm gonna go bankrupt with the next gen so i really need you guys help um and so that's it huge thank you to flow sports uh thank you for them to reaching out to me and making all this happen this is amazing and of course this wouldn't be possible without all of you guys so thank you guys so so much for all your love and support i really appreciate it this is awesome and thank you guys so much and without further ado let's go ahead and get right back to the diecast hall all right, so let's start off with this absolute monstrosity of Terry Labonte right here. The Kellogg's Racing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, so there's the card if you want to take a look at it. <laughs> oh, my gosh, bro. We got the the Terry Labonte freaking <laughs> four-wheeler. Oh, my gosh. This is hilarious. It's got the... Oh my gosh. It's got the Frost of Flakes paint scheme on it. Oh my gosh. This is hilarious. This this might be my favorite thing. <laughs> Just because of how stupid it is. Like, oh my gosh. Let's see, can we flip it? Uh, my, wait, wait, wait. My, my hand got in the way. I interfered. Oh, there we go. 
Oh my gosh, that that's so stupid and beautiful at the same time. I want to get the actual like paint scheme of this one. That's what I'm missing. I need to get the actual Frosted Flakes paint scheme because this goes hard, honestly. Such a cool looking, like this looks cool. Like it's ridiculous, but it looks super cool. That's crazy. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next die cast. All right, so next up we have this like random uh, sponsor one for Duralube. And it's just SR3. I don't know, I guess you couldn't even use this. It doesn't even have the Goodyear tires. Um, you couldn't even use this as a as a Bush series car either because obviously, well, one, it's on a Ford, so. Um, yeah, DEI never used a Ford. And DEI was using the three in X in the well then X Bush series, but now Xfinity series and the Cup series, and then yeah, <laughs> you can maybe use this as like an Arca car if you want. I mean, honestly, this looks like an Arca car. Let's be honest, like this paint scheme, this type of paint scheme is what you would see in Arca. So you could use it as that. Oh my, bro, what is this number placement? You have one number slid back all the way over here, and then the other one all the way over here. Oh my gosh, bro, who designed this? <laughs> like, besides this atrocious number placement, it's actually a pretty solid paint scheme. Maybe add, like, a little bit of yellow on the front bumper here. And, like, it's golden. Like, honestly, it's pretty decent. But, oh my gosh, bro, that's... That's atrocious, bro. Then we got the SR3 up here, too. Probably should have added another Duralube thing back here. That's hilarious. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the next one now. All right. So next up, we have some Jeff Burton cars. Uh, this is his Exide Batteries car. I do not know what year this one came loose. So I do not know what year it's from, but it looks pretty cool. It's got a little bit of wear and tear. This whole part's broken right here. I don't know how. Because this one did come loose, um, which means it didn't it didn't come in a box, so it's not brand brand new, like uh, most of these other diecasts that I got here. But still in pretty decent condition, I'd say. Nonetheless, a little bit of paint chips there and that, but other than that, it's pretty solid. Nice, really nice colors on this. I really love this car. Looks pretty solid. But we got the even better version over here, um, and I. Do not know again what year this one is because all the Jeff Burton cars came loose. Um, I got a, a set of four of them. They all came loose, so I have no clue what year they're from. But they all look pretty cool. So it's pretty much the exact same scheme, but on a different body car um, as this one. But still pretty cool. There's some minor differences. The 99 here is outlined in the reddish pink color. The 99 here isn't. So it's not the exact, exact same, but it is very similar. You can see the simulators here. It's a little bit of black under this one, just solid here. Yeah, very similar, but not exactly the same, which is nice. Because at first, when I first looked at them, I was like, oh, it's the same one, but it's not. There's, there's, some, there's enough uh, differences to be categorized as different schemes. So yeah, pretty cool. Let's go to move on to the next one. All right, so next up we have a pretty cool number 22 Maxwell House Sterling Marlin car. So that's pretty cool. I did not know that he drove the 22 car at one point in time. All, all I know from Sterling Marlin is that he drove the 40 car for Ganassi, the Coors Light car. That's all I know. <laughs> but yeah, still very, very cool paint scheme. You know, it's it's... Base, it's blue, but like it's a nice, like glowy, like reflective blue, nice and like shiny with l l those like little reflecting particles, and it has the orange to contrast. It looks pretty nice. I like it. Um, I don't really have anything to compare it to, really, other than uh, the Jeff Gordon car from the last video because it's on the same body style, same kind of car. Uh, so yeah, that's all I've got to compare it to. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next diecast. And actually, speaking of Sterling Marlin. Marlin, I need to get that number 40 car because that one's really nice. All right, so next up we got Kenny Irwin in a 1956 Ford Fairline Victoria. Uh, we got cool customs right here. Then we got all this. You can pause, read it if you'd like. Let me get the glare out the way. There we go. Let's 
go ahead and look at the car. It looks pretty cool. I always love when they put the uh, NASCAR schemes on like different types of cars, just like this stupid little, stupid and yet cool little uh, four wheeler here. You know, that's what NASCAR needs to keep doing. They need to keep doing like this silly stuff like this because it, it's wonderful. It's amazing. Like they need to keep doing this because it's awesome. Like people would buy this just because of how stupid it is. I promise you. <laughs> Why do you think I have one? <laughs> But yeah, still very, very cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at... Oh, actually, no, we have a scheme to compare it to. Almost forgot. So here's the regular scheme that Kenny Irwin used in the 28, just for a quick little comparison here. And now we can go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, so next up, we have the tiniest little die cast I have ever seen in my life. Oh my gosh, we have this Robbie Gordon car. Let me see, is there anything on the back? There we go. But, oh my gosh, this is so tiny. This is a 144 scale die cast. Look at that. Bro, that looks better than... Oh my gosh, bro. Lionel has to step up the game. Because, I mean, look at this. Let me show you guys the 187 scale. Look at how much bigger the 187 scale cars that Lionel makes now are. Look at the amount of detail this one has that this one doesn't. Like, look. Like, oh my. Bro, look at the undercarriage of this one. Then look at the undercarriage of this one. Like, oh my, bro. This doesn't even show the exhaust. And I'm pretty sure this one does. Yeah, you can very faintly see it. But, like, it actually has, like, all the indentations and stuff. This one's all just stickers. Like, oh, my gosh. Bro, Lionel. Lionel keeps embarrassing themselves every time when I make these videos because, oh, my gosh. But look at that. They actually get the back of the car right instead of just making a big, fat meatloaf of a rear bumper. Like, this is a super speedway package for the Gen 6, bro. Like, oh, my gosh. This is far superior. Let's go and move you out the way. You're you're useless now. I'm never buying a 187 scale again unless they make them this good. Because, I mean, come on. And speaking of, we actually got another one here. A Ricky Craven car for Hendrick Motorsports, number 25. I never knew he drove for Hendrick Motorsports or that he drove the 25. So, yeah, that's pretty cool to have. Again, so much detail on something so small. Like, why can't Lionel do this? Like, why? Like, this is so good. It looks really cool. And I do actually have some to compare it with. So this isn't Ricky Craven, but it is another um, another 25 car for Hendrick Motorsports. So just a quick little comparison here. And yeah, you can see how much detail it has. Incredible. Like, it actually has a window net. It's see-through. You can see the stuff inside. Like, oh my gosh, bro. Lionel got to step their game up big time. All right, so next up we have Rick Mast's uh, 1977 number 75 Kennington car. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Oh, it just says where his hometown is, where he's born, his name, his signature. So that's pretty boring. Let's go ahead and take a look at the car itself. This is a pretty nice looking car. I got to say, I love the color green they use and how much it reflects. Like, I love these, like, shiny colors that they would use. And, like, these, like, reflective, like, particle. Like, I love those paint schemes. And then the nice hint of the bright, like, neon orange really complements it really well. Looks really good. I like this car. I don't have anything to compare it to. But, yeah, this is great. Really love this car. Looks fantastic. And let's go ahead and move on to the next one now. All right, so next up, I have no clue who this is because it didn't say on the container it came in. But it is a number 19 Dodge for Ray Everingham, uh, his team. I know that for sure. And I know Bill Elliott drove the 9 car for this team at one point, And Casey Kane did as well, but I have the Bill Elliott diecast right here. But I have no clue who drove the 19 because a bunch of different people drove the 19. I only know of two people who drove the 9. And I have no clue what that says. Let's see, can I zoom in? Yeah, I cannot make that out at all. 
If you guys know, let me know in the comments down below because I have no clue at all. But it looks really nice. I like it. I love the Dodge paint schemes. They're simple yet great. Like, you know, it just gets the point across, you know? Very, very good looking car. Compare it here with uh, the Bill Elliott car. Looking pretty cool. And let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, we got another Dodge here. But this one is Adam Petty. It doesn't say it here, but I know, like 99% sure that this is Adam Petty's number 45 car. Um, very, very cool looking paint scheme. This one's really nice. I like it. Got the nice little combination of the silver, black, and red with the white little highlights for the numbers and sponsors. Looks very, very nice. Very solid looking paint scheme indeed. Very cool. And speaking of petties, let's go ahead and move on to Richard Petty uh, Motorsports. Here with John Andretti's number 43 Cheerios car. Always a really nice car. The Cheerios cars always come out really nice, especially with the Petty Blue here. Looks very, very cool. Let's get a look up here. Really, really cool car. And let's go ahead and move on to the king himself, Richard Petty. Right here we got his STP oil treatment car. This one's really cool. And let's go ahead and compare it with this car. Eric Amarola's throwback to... I'm pretty sure it's a throwback to this car. Unless it is one that's very similar. Although, I mean, these are both very similar in the first place. I think maybe it's a, maybe this one's just a different year. But like it's a year close to this year. But it is very very similar so i think it's this one i'm probably wrong though <laughs> let's be honest i'm probably wrong <laughs> but uh, it's close enough <laughs> right yeah okay <laughs> but yeah still both very very cool paint schemes cool to add another richard petty car to my collection and actually i forgot to uh compare this car with the other john and jordy cars i've picked up we got the Grants Pillsbury and the uh, Pop Secret car. So we got a nice collection of John and Jody cars now, which is pretty cool. Anyways, let's go to move on to the next one. All right, so moving on to another Jeff Burton car. This one is his probably his best paint scheme. Let's be honest, his Exide car once again, but this is from a different year, and it is the far superior paint scheme. I mean, look, come on, this paint scheme is just gorgeous. The mix of the pink blue the lightning the white the black it all blends together so well such an amazing paint scheme looks really great uh his son harrison burton's doing a throwback to this car and it looks just as good such a cool paint scheme and i actually do also have the matt benedetto throwback to this car and i mean come on it's such a great paint scheme on both cars i mean oh my goodness what a what a paint scheme like who would design this paint scheme? Like, we need to give them a raise, like, now. <laughs> if they didn't get one already, they, they deserve one now. Because it's such a great paint scheme. Such, such a great car. And let's go ahead and move on to another Jeff Burton car. But this one's got a twist. Alright, so... Oh, no, it's raining! We got the car covers on the cars already because it is pouring over here at the racetrack. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Alright, well... I just wet this whole track in this thing. But this is cool. This this car came with a car cover. So it's a Jeff Burton test car right here. The Exide car. Uh, probably the same year as this one, actually. Uh, but just the test car version. We've got 99A. <laughs> just 99 and then A. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's a test car. I mean, what do you expect? Um, I do actually have another old test car. Um, right here, the number 10 tied car. Pretty cool. And actually, I do have one more test car. Got the Chase Elliott test car here. So that's pretty cool. Got a pretty decent collection of uh, test cars now. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, let's move these two out of the way and talk about this one. So first of all, this one comes with a whole car cover. I mean, come on, Lionel, what are you doing? Like, this is what we need. Especially, like, if... A car wins the race during a rain delay. 
or like a not a rain delay but uh the race ended due to rain like that's what we need it like at least have it come with a car cover when it's a race win that ends because of rain because i mean that is just so cool bro i mean come on like look at that like it should it should not be that hard honestly Lionel, you need to get back to doing that because this is awesome. Like every time I do these vintage NASCAR diecast videos, I feel like I embarrass Lionel every time because of how good these older things are. Like it should not be that hard if they did it back then. So why can't we do it now? Come on. <laughs> but yeah, this is super cool. Super, super cool. It's kind of wet now, but <laughs> it should dry up eventually. But yeah, that is super cool. Like, come on, like Justin Haley's 2019 Daytona win, uh, Bubba Wallace's 2021 uh, Talladega win. Uh, let's see, what what are the rain wins? Can I think of off the top of my head? Um, uh, Chris Busher's uh, 2016, I think. Uh, Pocono win, like th they should have all come with car covers. I mean, come on. Like it doesn't happen that often. You can shell a little money, Lionel. Like, come on. Anyways, let's move on to the next diecast. All right, well, I'm getting word from the NASCAR officials that this section of the track is still wet. Uh, the air dry, the air tightens, the air dryers, whatever you want to call them, they're currently out on the track trying to dry it right now. But uh, they're saying we've got to move to another, uh, another turn uh, in the meantime. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's keep it with the Ford Tauruses. Uh, we're looking at Matt Kenseth, 2000. Uh, that's a year. Um... Dewalt car. So this is pretty cool. This is uh, my very first old Matt Kenseth diecast. I've pretty much only have uh, the ones from his final years. So this is pretty cool to have uh, one of his old Roush cars from back in the day, especially the Dewalt car. Such a cool car. Really, really nice. I love, I love the colors, the paint scheme. Uh, Eric Estep would probably rate this car a ten out of ten. <laughs> Yeah, this is super cool. Like, and Hot Wheels made this diecast. Like, can we get Hot Wheels to start making NASCAR diecast again? Because, I mean, this looks incredible. This looks so good. The quality, the rubber tires, the material. Oh, my gosh, bro. This is amazing. We need we need Hot Wheels to start making NASCAR diecast again because this is awesome. I do have something to compare it with here. So, I think, I think, I think, I think this is Kenseth's. I think this is the same scheme Ken's is throwing back to. If not, then it's one that's very similar. Uh, only really real differences I'm seeing are the roof numbers. So I think it might be the same scheme. If not, correct me in the comments down below. But I think it might be. But I mean, yeah, you can just see the difference in quality between these two. I mean, it's such a huge difference. Like, oh my gosh, bro, Lionel, please start making better quality diecast. Please, I beg you. This looks so good. The only thing better about this one, I'd say, is like the color. Like this one is a little, maybe it's just faded, but the, the colors are definitely better on this one, for sure. But the actual car itself, this one, superior by a large margin. But yeah, let's go to move on to the next diecast. And from one Roush driver to another, let's go ahead and move on to this Mark Martin car, the number 60 right here, uh, from 1996. Take a look at the back right here. Pretty cool. And let's go ahead and look at his Win dixie car, the number 60. Very, very cool looking car. You know, I actually thought I had this one already, so I wasn't going to open it up. But it is actually different from the one I have. Pretty, pretty significantly. You can see uh, the roof number here is different color. It has... A color on the roof and this one's black and then over here you can see the differences in the stripes actually you probably see it better here see this one has a red stripe this one doesn't this one it's a lot smaller this one it's a lot bigger and it has a white stripe too on top that's much larger this one has a Ford logo on the back and this one's just better quality too like this one's a lot lighter and it has a gray interior. This one's a lot heavier. And like you can feel like the difference in quality. They're like almost the exact same model. I think they are the same model. Oh no, they're slightly different. And this one does have some wear and tear anyway. So I was like, oh, well, if it's the same one, I might as well replace it. But it's actually not. So I'll just keep them both. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, really, really cool to have another Mark Martin car. I have 
quite a few now. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And speaking of cars I have already, we have this Dale Jarrett Interstate Batteries car number 18 right here. You can take a look at this little card right here. So this one I do actually have, but it was one that I got a while ago that came loose and it was uh, damaged. So I'll just replace it with this one. And this one will be banished to the Shadow Realm, unfortunately. Had a good run, buddy, but uh, we got the better one now. Nice, brand new, clean, looking very nice. You know, this one, this one's up for retirement. So we'll go ahead and put that one back. But yeah, very, very cool car. Love to have this one brand new now. Will look very nice in the collection. And yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So from the 18 to the 8, we have this Hut Strickland. 1997 car uh the number eight circuit city car so i believe this was the last person to race the eight car in cup before dale jr took it over uh with dei so that's pretty cool uh it's red and black just like uh how it would how it would look when dale jr took it over uh so hutch strickland i have no clue who this guy is so if you guys want to give me like a little summary of his career and stuff like that that'd be pretty cool if not i'll look it up myself but it'd be cool to see it in the comments down below just i just like to interact with you guys really fun but yeah we got this circuit city car right here looks pretty cool like i said uh when dale jr took over the a car well pretty much same colors black white and red so that's pretty cool main difference is uh ford and chevy pretty much uh, but yeah, still pretty cool to have this guy and hopefully I learn some more about him pretty soon Anyways, let's go to move on to the next one All right, so next up we have this Dale Earnhardt jr. 1998 Grand National Division champion. So I'm pretty sure that was the Bush now Xfinity series So that's pretty cool. We got the number three AC Delco car right here. I actually do have this one in a uh, one. I forgot what scale this is one uh, it's not, um, I think it's like 130 something. It's something. I think it's 144 or something like that. It's in between 167 and 124. That's all I know. <laughs> but yeah, still pretty cool. Now uh, we got the uh, smaller version now. So that's pretty nice. Uh, I think, yeah, they're on different bodies, but it's the same paint scheme. So that's all that matters. Cool to have it in 164 now. So that's pretty cool. Very, very cool indeed. And let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And next up, we got another Dale Jr. car, and it's the number three. We got his Oreo Ritz car. So this one's pretty cool. It does come with a hood. That's really nice. Really good looking hood. And yeah, let's take a look at this car. This is a beautiful car. One of my favorite Dale Jr. paint schemes. The Oreo car looks very, very cool. Very slick, very sweet. A little salty because of the Ritz crackers. <laughs> Yeah, really, really cool looking car. I love this paint scheme. Really, really nice. And he, uh, his team did a throwback to it with Michael Annette in the number one car. It's not exactly the same, but it is very, very close. This one, obviously. The original is obviously way better this time around, but still very, very close. Looks really good. Just to compare the two right here. Yeah, this one definitely needed a darker blue to be used. Uh, for the base needed a little tweaking here with some of this stuff going on but still really cool nonetheless really great looking car glad to have this one in my collection because it looks so great got the vanilla wafers snap on nutter butter really really cool fig newtons should put the fig newtons on the windshield <laughs> but yeah really really cool car love to own it and yeah let's go to move on to the next one all right, so next up, I was very confused by these. Uh, it's one of Dale Jr.'s future teammates uh, once he gets to 2008. But nonetheless, uh, we have 2002 Jimmy Johnson here. Now, you're probably saying, why'd you open the second one if you have two of the exact same one? Well, that's what I thought at first. They ha even have the same card you can see here. Same exact card, same exact paint scheme, but... There is one key difference, and it comes right along the front here. So this one, this little front part is black, 
and this one, the little front part is silver. Also, right over here, this thing's gray. This thing's a little bit more silverish looking. And then in the back here, this one has a little bit more silver than this one. So I don't know what the deal with this is, uh, but I mean, I like Jimmy Johnson, so I'll just have them both displayed in different areas. I actually have areas that I've selected uh, where I can display both of them separately, just so that way I don't get them confused. But yeah, still pretty cool nonetheless. This is one of Jimmy Johnson's first cars. Obviously his first one was the Lowe's uh, Power of Pride car. At least I'm pretty sure, <laughs> unless I completely forgot or got that wrong. But I'm pretty sure the Power of Pride one was the first one. But yeah, pretty cool to have uh, his first regular looking Lowe's car. So that's pretty cool to have. Uh, we also have, I have the 187 scale of this paint scheme. Uh, and I really regret not getting it in 164 or 124 at all. Now, like, you literally cannot find the 164 at all. And then the 124 is like $400. So, yeah. Looks like I'm never getting this in, except for this scale or the actual old version of it. So, yeah. Glad to uh, have this car now. Looks really cool. Gonna look great in the collection. And, yeah, let's go to move on to the last die cast of the day. And that would be another Hendrick Motorsports driver, the same driver we started the video off with, and that would be Terry Labonte, 1996, or the car's from 1996, and you can see here the little card, pretty cool, and yeah, we just got a regular old plain gray, I don't know what the story behind this is, why it's gray all of a sudden, uh, if one of you guys know in the comments down below, let me, let me know, I almost said let me low, <laughs> um low okay no I'm, I'm joking okay anyways still pretty cool looking car i like the finish on it. it's pretty nice you know it gets the job done it's pretty much the same scheme as the regular one i do have that one right here so yeah i mean pretty much the same exact scheme but uh just grayed out pretty much I'm, i mean i don't know is this like a test car or something i have no clue if you guys know, let me know in the comments down below. I also have the silver version of it uh, on the newer uh, newer car. I, I guess this this is the 90s car. This is the 2000s car. But yeah, pretty weird. Um, it does have some differences. Uh, the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes here. This one has the GMAC. Uh, for those of you who don't know, GMAC is actually now called Ally. So that's pretty cool. They've uh, been with Hendrick for a long time. But yeah, I have no clue what the deal between these silver cars are, why they're just randomly silver uh, so if, or and gray. So I don't know if if one of you guys know in the comments, let me, let me know down below because I have no clue. I mean, I love the traditional one. Like, it looks great. But I just want to know what the deal is between with this. Like, I mean, it looks nice, but I like this one better. But this one's still pretty cool. So if you guys know that, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. If you guys did enjoy, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It lets me know what videos you guys like me making. And you know, it just, just makes me happy to see the videos doing good and seeing comments that I can interact with in the comments. I love talking to you guys. Really fun. And yeah, without further ado, that's going to be it for this video. If, uh, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Stay super. And bye-bye.